Howdy guys, IndiePixel here, and what I wanted to do in this video was first off make the transition to Houdini 17, alright, so now I'm going to be doing everything in Houdini 17 from now on, alright, so all the intro to VEX stuff will be in Houdini 17, but in this video what I wanted to do was actually walk through um, just kind of my research and a little bit of development, R&D as they say, um, with the new map box node that comes with, um, the game development tools. All right. So I, I really wanted to go through in this first video, uh, just how to set it up and how to start to extract data from the, um, information that comes back from the API calls. Okay. So, um, this is an example, uh, that we're going to walk through throughout this particular, um, intro video. And really what I'm going to do is just kind of, as I learn more about it, I'm just going to update videos uh, throughout the process. So um, let's actually get started and learn how to create something that looks like this. All right. So we get splines for the rivers. We get splines for all the streams and we get a nice um, height map from all this or height field, I should say. Um, and this is hopefully you might recognize it's the, the Grand Canyon. It's part of the Grand Canyon. All right. And what I wanted to do is walk through the workflow just to show you how everything's working right now with the map box node over here, which is in beta right now. Okay. So let's start to learn how powerful this node can be for game development. Okay. So let's jump into it. So I'm going to switch to a different scene and we're going to get going. All right. So let's start from scratch and let's learn how we actually get all this functionality inside of Houdini. So the first thing uh, that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have the game development uh, shelf installed. So uh, inside of Houdini, if you don't already have it installed, you can always go here and say um, shelf sets, I believe, or I say uh, new shelf, or actually we should go and say, hit the little plus button here and go to the game development tool set. And what you'll see if you haven't already installed the game dev tools for Houdini, you'll just see a little icon over here that says update tool set. And you just want to click it and then just update to whatever, to whatever the latest is. Okay. And that will give you the map box node. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to drop down a geometry node. All right. So this basically is going to contain geometry. We're going to call this uh, map box test. All right. So I'm going to jump inside by hitting enter on the keyboard. Okay. And what I want to do here is just hit tab and start typing out map box. And what will happen is you'll see the game dev map box with the beta tag, at least as of this recording, it's in beta right now. So um, how do we actually get this to work? And what are all of these particular parameters over here? All right. So there's a, you know, a bunch of parameters. None of it's actually too complicated just yet. You know, I'm sure side effects will add a bunch of parameters to this um, as they start to get it out of beta. But I wanted to show how you can start using this uh, right off the bat. Okay. So um, the first step in getting this working is to get an API key. Okay. So this particular node is actually utilizing the Mapbox uh, API, and this is an, a different service. It's not a side effects thing or anything like that. So what we want to do is we want to go up to Mapbox. So enter in, you know, the URL that you see here. Okay. And this will take you to the Mapbox website. And so what you want to do is you want to sign up for the free account. Okay. So they have a, a nice free account here. So it's free to start up and you get a bunch of views. And because all that we're doing is really just messing around with it, the free account is totally fine for now. Okay. So it's not going to cost you any money and unless you start pinging it 50,000 times in a day. So, or in a month, I should say. Uh, so, um, if you're just doing this for, you know, terrain development or just learning how to use Mapbox in general, um, you're fine with the free plan for now. So once you get a, a free plan in place, all right. So once you get all that set up, what's going to happen is you're going to receive a couple emails and they're going to then send you to your account dashboard. And 
what you want to do is you want to go and copy your API key. Okay, so you can see this access token right here. And what you want to do is you want to copy your default public token. Okay, and you want to go and then paste that back into Houdini over here. Okay, so we're going to select that Mapbox node and we're going to go to the API key. Just expand the, the menu and then I'm just going to paste that in there. Like so. Okay, so once I, you have the API key in place, we can just fold that up and we can then do a lookup. So what we want to do is we want to fly, find a place on the planet <laughs> where we want to sample some terrain and, you know, what's actually happening on the surface of that terrain. So in terms of roads and buildings and stuff like that. So um, a great place uh, to start is the Grand Canyon because there's very uh, impressive terrain features there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just use the map box window that pops up here. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go find the Grand Canyon, which is right over around here. Okay, right around here. So we're just going to zoom in again and keep going until we get to the uh, National Park. There we go, right down here. Okay, so let's select a, a little bit of a different location this time. So let's do something over here. That looks like a cool little feature. So you really want to zoom in. So um, I should note right now that your zoom level uh, dictates how long it actually takes to download the satellite data okay so if you have a very large um, zoom level okay so meaning you have many many kilometers or miles right whichever unit of measure you're used to uh, it's going to take a long time so uh, if you're just messing around with this i highly recommend just to zoom in all right i made that mistake a couple times just zoom in all the way in and um, you know find a good little spot where you're pretty close to the terrain maybe it's a couple miles you know four or five miles will download pretty quickly so at this point i'm pretty happy with my selection so i'm going to hit download and what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to wait at this point all right so at a certain point houdini it, it currently it's not throwing up any sort of progress bar or anything like that so what you're going to have to do is just wait for it to actually download the data houdini will freeze up on you all right, but let it let it run, and what will happen is um, it's downloading all the, the data from Mapbox, so it's sending an API call. Okay, so um, we're going to grab all the height field information, and we're going to grab all the curve information that, you know, the USGS and a lot of the government agencies have provided, and also a lot of, you know, just private um, geo caching type people have provided in terms of their GPS data. So that all gets turned into curves once this is done computing. So I'm going to let this run for a little bit and then I'll be right back. All right. So I finally was able to download the uh, portion of the Grand Canyon here. And uh, this is just a subset. Uh, I went and changed the uh, zoom level because um, it started going above where I, I was waiting about 20 minutes for the zoom level that I was at. So I zoomed in a little bit more on that same sector, latitude and longitude. And uh, um, it downloaded a lot faster. So that's why we're seeing a smaller portion of what we actually selected. All right, but we can still work with this data. And if you look at it, we're getting all the color information. We're getting all the height information. It's And it's quite impressive. And, you know, obviously we're looking at the Grand Canyon. So... Uh, the height differences are quite extreme in this particular region uh, of the United States. So um, it makes more a more impressive demo. But what I wanted to show is how we go about actually working with some of this data now that we've got it. All right. So um, you can see up here, you know, in the, the base settings, um, we have our latitude and longitude and our zoom level, which is at 11. Uh, you can also go and rescale the height if you want to. Um, anytime you do that, it'll, it'll actually recook um, the uh, calculation. So it might take a little bit uh, longer for it to actually rescale it. And 
honestly, I, I usually just leave it at a height scale of one. And then I just use a uh, remap, a height field remap. Because if you notice that the output from the map box node is set to height field, which means, you know, we just have a height field or, you know, a, a Houdini terrain, uh, which is awesome because we have texture information and we also have height information. So we can easily just go and, you know, pipe that into a height field remap and uh, do a, uh, a compute range. And then you can go and, you know, do with it what you want from there. Right. Uh, what I want to do is actually just get rid of the color information for right now, because, um, you know, I'm still working uh, with a cop network setup to extract this information and then to process it a little bit more. But uh, what I want to do is just do some basic stuff for, uh, for right now. So we're going to do a uh, visualizer. So I want to do a height field visualize like so. And I'm just going to uh, pump out the result of this first output here. You can see that this node actually has two outputs. It has the height field information and we also have the OSM curves. Both are extremely powerful in terms of information. Okay, so you can see if we pipe that out, that height field out into the uh, visualized node, that we are now visualizing the uh, terrain elevation. So what I'm going to do is do a compute range right here. All right, and I'm going to set the min ele elevation down to zero. And actually, you know, I found that I can set this down to something like negative 50 and actually get a better result. All right, so that gives me that full range now for this particular terrain. And that actually looks kind of cool. Maybe we just leave it, leave it like that for this particular demo. Cool. Okay, so now we're, we've remapped the color data. And, you know, in COPS, you could actually extract all this information and actually turn that into a texture. Okay, so, um, again, I just want to keep this at a basic level and just kind of explain the, the outputs and the workflow of using the uh, Mapbox SOP node here in Houdini 17. Okay, so let's focus on the second output here. So this, these are the OSM curves. All right, so let's just pump that into a null node uh, for now so we can, you know, just view that data by itself. All right, it might take a little bit to compute too, depending on your zoom level. But in this case, because I zoomed way in, we were able to actually extract uh, the curves pretty quickly. But still, honestly, that's uh, quite a bit of terrain to cover right there. It's at least a couple of miles. All right, so we're getting a bunch of curve data. And um, let's actually n name this. We'll call this um, OSM curves for right now. And we'll call this um, terrain uh, colors. And we'll drop down a, a null node just to stay organized. All right, so I'm going to call this my uh, out height field and that should have been a uh, underscore there we go okay so I'm gonna just hold down uh, control and hit the template button so we can see our actual height field there and we're not actually getting our colors anymore which is weird let's set this back down to zero there we go then negative 50 that's that was an odd interesting bug all right so there we go so now we are able to uh, visualize our terrain let's template this and then turn this guy on there we go so now we can see all of our curves on top of the terrain which is crazy cool okay you can see we're actually getting the main curve for the river for the colorado river right there and we're getting a bunch of other information so let's let's talk about that really quick so if I were to select the null node here and go and split the pane top and bottom and then just set that to my geometry spreadsheet. Now, if you've been following my videos, I do love having the geometry spreadsheet down at the bottom here. It's by default up here as well, right? But um, you know, usually when I'm working, you know, during the day and stuff like that, I get rid of all this stuff because I do spend a lot of time um, just doing procedural modeling stuff. So there we go. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to look through all the information that's provided to us. So in the point um, class, 
you can see that we have a bunch of color information, positional data, uh, we're getting distance, uh, we're getting latitude and longitude information, and nor normals are all zero, so we have no normals, and we have a hit group. Cool. So, the more interesting part is if we actually go to the primitives. Okay, so the primitives are actually holding all the data um, that comes from all these different sources. All right, so all these things have actually been, you know, named and um, given, you know, certain classifications in a data format. So let me expand this here really quick so we can take a look. You can see all the different attributes that we have here um, from the data here. And it's all primitive data, basically. And so um, the one thing that I'm really interested in is the waterway, all right, for this particular type of uh, terrain. You know, in my experience so far with the Mapbox node is that um, if I turn this into a city, or if I actually focus in on a, a larger metropolitan city, um, I get a lot more data. But because I'm out, you know, in kind of the wilderness and, you know, over the Grand Canyon, I don't get as much data. But one of the interesting things about this particular data set is I get a waterway attribute. And this waterway attribute gives me this string value. And this string value tells me if I have a stream or if I have a river. Look at that. So that's pretty interesting. All right, so let's let's go take a look at how we can actually do something with that. So uh, what I want to do is drop down a blast node. All right, and I'm going to um, get the rivers. So let's get the rivers here. And what I need to do is I need to say if the, because remember, uh, we're looking for the waterway, so we can actually filter it out over here. If I put in a waterway, you can see right here, we're focusing in on that particular attribute. All right, let's select this node here because that has all the data. And you can see that waterway is equal to a stream or to a string called stream. All right. And so what we need to do is we need to say um, if the waterway attribute is equal to a stream, then let's get that. All right, and let's say delete non selected. And let's actually just take a look at just that data. And you can see it's returning for me all the streams. And it's all in curve format. So we have points, right? And you can actually resample this too inside of that OSM or inside of the Mapbox node. So you can say um, resample OSM curves. And it'll go and resample it. And we can actually set the segment length. So I'm going to set it to like something like five. Or let's do 10. This terrain is massive. So you can see that, yeah, we're at about 15,000 meters, almost 20,000 meters. So it's a few miles for sure. All right, let's do something like uh, 30. That's starting to help out. Let's do 50. Yeah, these things are super huge. There we go. So you, you can see now that we're getting these curves. All right. And they're all separated out into primitives and stuff like that. But it defines all the streams, all the major streams for this particular terrain. All right. So let's template this again. There we go. We're getting all the streams. That's incredible amount of data right there. Just that by itself. All right. But it gets even better, especially when you start dealing with cities and stuff like that. So uh, let's do an alt drag. So I'm going to select this and do alt click, left click, drag. And um, I'm going to call this streams actually. So get streams like so. And we're going to call this one get rivers. And so uh, what I want to look for now is the river string value. And voila, look at that. We get the Colorado River. Boom. Perfect curve. There are two primitives in it. So we have zero and we have one. So we'll have to do some processing there, but uh, we'll save that for a later video. Really what I want to do is just show you how to start to extract data. I mean, we're getting the height field already, and this is an impressive uh, height field right here. And we're also getting curved data. So let's actually do something with the curved data, something simple. So I'm going to colorize um, the streams here. Okay, so let's turn off our point display and get rid of the templating there. So right now they're all colored white. Let's uh, let's color them something like a blue, something like that. And let's take 
the original color. You can see they have an original color here that's just coming from the the uh, satellite data. All right, so let's just do a uh, a wrangle node. Okay, since you know we're talking about vex a lot lately. All right, so we're just going to pipe this into the first input, pipe this into the second input there, which is actually input one. All right, and what I want to do is I want to take the current color value, so CD, all right, and I want to multiply it by the color that's coming in from geometry one or index one, because remember it's zero, one, two, three, right? So geometry one. And I want to get the CD attribute, and I want to get it from uh, point num, or PT num, sorry, like so, semicolon. So there we go. So now we've multiplied the color over it. Now we got, you know, some nice blue streams. All right, so we'll just call this the colorize streams. All right, I'm going to just um, actually copy both these nodes and just do a control C, control V. And let's colorize the river just so we can see it as well. So for this one, I just want to colorize it maybe more of a, like a dirty color, dirty water type of color. Not that it's like toxic or anything. It's just because it's got so much sediment in it. All right. So maybe we'll just go back over to something like that. All right. So let's merge these two data sets together. So we have streams and we have rivers. Boom, look at that. Wow, we could do so much stuff with that right there. And then if we just uh, merge that with our terrain, our height field. Look at that. Let's just maximize this here really quick. And I'll close out the lecture. I know that was a little long, but, you know, super exciting stuff. Uh, really amazing uh, amounts of data being provided to us, you know, basic for free, you know, but this is amazing right here. We could do a lot with this information. So that was my whole goal with this particular video was just to kind of get, give you a nice gentle introduction to how to work with the Mac box node and, um, how to get everything set up and then how to start working with the data. You know, everything is an attribute when it comes in there. And, you know, the data isn't necessarily fully complete. Uh, it's This whole thing is still in beta, so I'm sure more of those attributes will be supported here pretty soon, um, hopefully. Um, you know, by default, I would say that, you know, just getting the river curve <laughs> and getting the terrain is a huge win in terms of uh, game development and level design and stuff like that. So, anyways, I'm going to leave you guys there. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.